Okay, today we'll, uh, we will prove a, an important theorem on projection on convex sets in Hilbert spaces. So the theorem is the following. So if you want, you can, you can uh, think about H equal to L2, if you want, OK? So uh, otherwise, uh, we, we, if, you, if you prefer to, to, have, to be more general, then you, you take an Hilbert space. So let H be a Hilbert space. Uh, and let, uh, let me denote it by C, a subset of H with the following properties, non-empty, convex, and closed. Remember that Closed here means sequentially closed. Closed with respect to the strong norm. So with respect to the norm induced by the distance. OK? When I don't write anything, I mean, this is closed with respect to the distance in, in H, in the norm in H. OK. Um, then. For any H in H, there exists a unique, let me denote it by X, with the following pro satisfying uh, such that so that the distance between a H and X is equal distance between H and C. Uh, let, so let, let me comment uh, what, what, what I mean with this, uh, with this notation. So the distance between H and X is just H minus X, OK? Because Hilbert space have a norm. And therefore, this is just this is a vector space, so the distance is just the, the norm of the difference. Okay. Now, what does it mean the distance uh, of a point from a set? Uh, definition: distance of a point in the space and a set subset in the space is just the smallest possible, smallest in the sense the infimum. OK, just the infimum of the distance, OK, which is nothing else, of course, OK? So what, what is this uh, theorem saying? The picture is more or less the following. You have a convex set, C, hmm? this is C, inside the big Hilbert space. Hmm? It is non-empty and it is convex. You need also to know that it is closed. So that, then you have a point H, OK? Then H could be, say, inside or outside. The most interesting case is when H is outside. OK, so take a point H outside. Well, then you take the distance between all possible pairs, H, C. Hmm? The theorem says that there is just only one, probably 
in this picture is, is this uh, x, which minimizes all possible distances. So the, the length of this segment is less uh, than the length of all other segments. Hmm? The idea is that if we could talk about tangent, but we cannot. We are in infinite dimension. For the moment, we cannot talk about tangent. But the idea is that, OK, in finite dimension, this is 90 degree. And this is the, the point which minimizes the distance. OK? We cannot do this in infinite dimension, this picture. But the idea is the following. OK, this is just 90 degree. OK? So the, you have to take, uh, so the, what is the idea, more or less? Huh? Well, the idea, let, let me do once more the picture. So this is C. This is H. Well, more or less, the idea is the following. You take the ball. Hmm? Of your Hilbert space. This is the ball centered at H of some radius of your Hilbert space. Huh? And then at some moment, there is an intersection. Huh? And this is the point of minimal distance. There is just one intersection. Why? Mo morally. This is not a proof. Eh? Just, just the idea. This is not a proof. Morally, why there is just only one in intersection? When there are no, I mean, uh, when things can go wrong. Yes, of course, you have more. Well, the first is the point of minimal distance. No? The idea is, so you, you have two convex sets. One is the ball, the other is C. So you, you enlarge the ball un, until you touch the first time. Hmm? And the claim is that you touch the first time and you touch at only one point and not two points or three points or infinite many points. So when things could go wrong in finite dimension, for instance. Well, C is a convex set, for instance, this. This is convex. Fine, it's just half plane. Okay. Well, if you are in a space where the unit ball is this, then there may be problems, right? Because then there are several points with the same distance. However, in Hilbert, even if it is difficult to say, because we are in infinite dimension in general, we have already observed that the ball is somehow uniformly convex. So remember the definition of uniformly convex. Huh? And therefore, the idea, OK, this ball is uniformly convex is more or less like this. Huh? And therefore, even if this is not uniform, even if C is not uniformly convex, but the ball is. So this is uh, something behind, OK? OK, so um, now, and you see, OK, this, this picture is very, is very Euclidean. Uh, the, here, my, I, I was thinking about the ball, which is really this, the round sphere. The, the, but this is not Euclidean. I mean, this, this is the point of minimal distance. But clearly, this is non, not 90 degree, because this ball was not Euclidean. It's just an ellipsoid. However, this is the point of minimizing the distance, OK? So let us prove the theorem. So if H is in C, of, of first of all, C is non-empty. And therefore, 
the distance between h and c is finite. Okay. The distance from uh, the, the distance from the empty set is more or less, by definition, plus infinity. Huh? Once the set is, is 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 not empty, then this distance is finite. We can also assume. I will mean, if h is in C, uh, then the solution, which is the solution, h itself. So x equal to h is the solution we are looking for. Because of course, this is 0. Uh, so we have 0 equal to 0. Not only this, but, but h is unique. Uh, x is unique because the, if the distance is 0, we know from the property of the distance then there is just only one point having zero distance, exactly that point, h. Okay? So this is the unique solution of this minimum problem. So by the way, notice that we have to solve a minimum problem in infinite dimensions. So if you want, this is a problem in calculus of variations. We have to find the minimizer of some functional, of some function. Now, the function is, this is the distance from h. So we have to find the minimum and to show that this minimum is unique. So a classical problem in calculus of variations. Okay. Therefore, if h is in c, the solution is h, x equal to h. So we can now we can assume that, and this is unique. Okay, so now we can assume that h is not in c. Okay. So now let let me give, um, so. Now take a minimizer. So usually this is the standard method in calculus of variation. We can take a minimizing sequence, pick a minimizing sequence. What does it mean? Sequence. This means the following. So this is an infimum. <coughs> OK, so remember, this is the infimum of all h minus c such that c is in c. OK? Then we can pick a minimizing sequence, which is the following. Sequence of points, c, let me denote it by c, c what? cn. Let me denote it by Cn, sequence of points of C, such that the limit as n goes to plus infinity of D Cn HCn is equal to the infimum. This is by definition of infimum, simply. This is an infimum of uh, this function. You can take a sequence of points here converging to the infimum, such that this h minus cn converges to the infimum. This you can always do. Hmm? OK? Sorry for the notation. You have to be careful. Capital C, this is capital C. And this is small c. I, I will try to, to write symbols. Huh? Uh, however, these are points in c. So maybe I am using the letter c for this, for this reason. So I will try to write c, cn very small. <laughs> OK. So, what, so this, this always exists. There is a minimizing sequence. So now let me give you uh, two proofs. One proof, first proof, we use the parallelogram identity. So from now on, therefore, this proof is adapted to the Hilbert setting, right? Because we know that these characterize Hilbert norms. 
So this, this proof cannot be, if we want to do the proof using the parallelogram identity, this proof cannot work in Banach. Hmm? So we use the parallelogram identity. So remember, so our parallelogram identity is the following. So we have uh, A, B, and therefore R one half A squared plus B squared must be equal this plus this uh, is just uh, this plus this. So. This is our parallelogram identity. <coughs> and we, uh, we, 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 we try this with the following choice. <coughs> H uh, minus, say, Cn. And uh, B equals, say, <coughs> H minus Cm with two different indices. Okay. The idea is that, which is the idea? We want to show that this sequence is Cauchy. Hmm? Therefore, if we want to show that this sequence is Cauchy, we want to control the difference Cn minus Cm. And so to control the difference, you see, if, if I take this minus this, I, can, I have the difference. And then there is something else. So I, I try this, OK? So, be, uh, so because we want, because we want to control Cn minus Cn. Hope, the hope is that Cn is Cauchy. OK, this is the, the idea. <clears throat> OK. So let me apply that. So let me write it exactly like it is. So we have, say, no, no, I prefer maybe to multiply everything by 1 half so that this is 1, 4. Huh? And so we have 1 half now h minus cn squared plus uh, H minus CM square equal one four, and then we have the sum, which is two H minus CN minus CM square plus now the difference is what we want to control, so uh, CN minus CM square. OK? <clears throat> OK, so let me write the right hand side as follows. Uh, this is equal to uh, h minus cn plus cm over 2 square plus well, 1 4 cn minus cm square. OK, because I, I put the 4 inside the norm. But the norm is squared, so this is actually a 2. 2 cancels with this 2, and uh, the 2 remain, remains just only here, OK? OK. And therefore, uh, so we have, so let, let me write this as follows. 1, 4, what I want control, what, meaning control, meaning that I would like that this goes to 0. So this is equal to 
uh, one half uh, h minus c n uh, minus one half h minus c m square plus h minus uh, c n minus c m uh, two square. Huh? It's still positive. The, the opposite, uh, yes, sorry. <laughs> plus, plus, and minus. Okay. Now, <clears throat> this is a minimizing sequence, okay? Hmm? Okay. So this converges by definition uh, to one half the distance uh, because it is a minimizing sequence. So uh, H minus Cn, as m goes to infinity, converges to the, the one half the distance between H and C. Okay, this is as n goes to infinity. And this, for the same reason, for as m goes to infinity, converges to one half the distance. Let's see. Okay. Now, we observe that C is convex. Huh? And therefore, this Cn plus Cm divided by 2 is just a, co a, a, com a combination, a convex combination of two points of uh, C. So uh, Cn, Cm, both belongs to C, which is convex, and this belongs to C. OK? This belongs to C. This implies that this is the distance between H and, the, and one point of C. Uh, so this is H minus Cn plus Cm over 2 is the distance between one point and uh, one point of C. And so this is surely larger than the, than the distance. Hmm? It is clear this? Is it clear? Therefore, when I put the minus, I find that this, this object here, hmm? so let me go here. So this is surely less than or equal than 1 half h minus cn squared plus 1 half h minus cm square minus this distance square. Hmm? Well, then, this goes to this. This goes to this. Therefore, when n and m are sufficiently large, huh, this goes to 0. Hmm? And this shows that this goes to 0. Hmm? Sorry, there is, there is a square here. Eh? The, this square, sorry, here there is a square. Eh? OK. So 1 half, 1 on us, minus 1, this goes to 0. Is it clear? Is it OK? So Cn is Cauchy. So we have used convexity of C here. Huh? 
So we have for the moment used that C is non-empty and convex. Still we have to use that uh, it is closed. Okay. Now Cn is Cauchy, H is Hilbert, therefore Cn converge to some point X in H. Hmm? Okay. Okay, now we are done. Because uh, Cn converges to X, the distance is continuous with respect to the strong uh, with respect to the strong convergence. So this limit is also uh, H minus. Uh, this limit is then also equal to the distance. Uh, Okay. And therefore, the distance from H to one point is, is equal to the infimum. So we have find the solution to our minimum problem. Is it OK? okay. Uniqueness, not yet. But, but for the moment, OK? Well, now. So these are equal, and this shows existence. OK? Huh? Because x is in C, right? C is closed. x is in C, and we have solution uniqueness for the moment. OK? So we have used the closure, uh, so non-empty. Convexity, when we want to show that uh, that convex combination is an element of C, and closure to know that this strong limit belongs to C because C is strongly closed. Okay? So that we have a solution. Hmm? Okay. Now, uniqueness. So maybe there is a remark here. This minimum problem, uh, no, uh, the minimum problem dhx equal dhc is equivalent to this, to this. This is maybe home. The, the point is that this square from the outside of the infimum can go inside the infimum. Hmm? Namely, a, a solution to this is a solution to this and conversely. OK. Now, this function here. has one property. It is strictly convex. Strictly convex on the convex set C. Therefore, it has a unique minimizer. Hmm? <clears throat> we will prove minim uh, uniqueness also in other, in other ways. But this maybe is one. By strict convexity, I mean that, uh, well, strict convexity, this, this, this is, a, uh, this, this is in, in a convex set. And what is strict convexity? This is a scalar value function. So it's strictly convex. It is known. What, is, what does it mean? OK. Now, let me give you, so strictly convex. So let me give you now another proof of existence which is not really completely 
self-contained. So another proof. So another proof is the following. So take again Cn. Let me still denote it by Cn, minimizing sequence. This, this, this proof is probably more instructive than the previous one. The previous one is just magic because of the parallelogram identity. But as soon as you, you don't remember that there is the parallelogram identity, or as soon as you don't want to use the parallelogram identity, then you don't know what to do. I mean, that proof is perfect, but adapted to, to the Hilbert case. Now, minimizing sequence, and then You, we know that uh, minimizing sequence means that the limit of uh, H minus Cn is equal to the infimum of H minus C, C in C, which is finite, right? Hmm. OK? This is what we have for the moment. Now. Since this is finite, this means that for, we can assume that for any n, for any n, there is, there is a k such that for any n. OK? So this is sequence of bounded numbers. Hmm? Hmm? This we can assume. Now, we also have that Cn is less than or equal than H minus Cn plus H by the triangular property of the distance. Hmm? OK? And therefore, also, this is uniformly bounded. Because this is uniformly bounded, that this is just a number, a given number, independent of n. OK? Therefore, there is another constant such that this is true. Now, this says that our sequence our minimizing sequence from this, uh, from this bound here is a bounded sequence. OK? So the sequence Cn is bounded, strongly bounded, of course. Now you remember something that we have proven here last time which says that bounded sets are weakly sequentially compact, OK, in Hilbert. Huh? But this property is true in, more, in, in higher generality than this. But at least in Hilbert, we know we have proved in L2. OK, sorry, this, this, we have proven this in L2. So now assume that H is equal to L2, but th this proof is much more general. So. Since this compact, weak compactness property we have proven just on in let 2, we assume that H is in two. So G is bounded, therefore, so there exists a subsequence uh, of Cn, subsequence, uh, sorry, there exists a subsequence. in the sequence, so that C and K converge. And there exists a point. And there exists a point. Let me call it x into h equal to L2, unfortunately, because of, of our, such that C and K converges weakly to x.
Hmm? Now, <coughs> the, pro the problem is that now there are two problems. First of all, one problem is the following. Um, what about h minus x? So I claim that h minus x is less than or equal than the limit s k maybe goes to infinity of h minus c. <coughs> so this is the following statement, more general statement. You have a bounded sequence weakly converging to something, then the norm is lower semi-continuous, but not continuous, just lower semi-continuous. Because your convergence is not strong, it's weak. Therefore, you cannot pretend to have strong convergence. Um, yeah, you cannot pretend to have strong co uh, convergence of the norms, of the difference of the strong convergence, but at least the, the, the norm is weakly lower semi-continuous. <clears throat> so, how to show this? Well, you take the scalar product h minus x, h minus uh, c and k. Hmm? h minus s, h minus c and k. And then you know that this is less than or equal that h than h minus x by the um, cauchy schwarz inequality uh, c and k. Okay? Then you know this. However, C and K is weakly converging to, to X. So, by the weak, the weak convergence implies that this converges to H minus X, H minus X. Hmm? So this converges, since uh, the weak convergence is enough to say that this converges to h minus x comma h minus x. Because this, against this, uh, so this is an element of your space, and this converges against all elements of your space. Remember, no, the, the definition of weak convergence says not that the components, but more, not only all components, but all projections on any vector of the space. Therefore, this converges to h minus x square. Uh, so the limit of this, uh, uh, therefore, the limit uh, of uh, the four, we f what we find, we find that the limit of this is equal to this, so h minus x square, less than or equal than here there is the limit, because we don't know also the limit. So h minus x limit as, as k goes to plus infinity h minus c and k. Therefore, uh, now h and x are, di uh, are different, and this implies that uh, this implies this. So we have you. So we have observed also that there is weak lower semi-continuity of the norm. And so, for the moment, uh, we are we are in a good shape. Now, the point is, unfortunately, that we would like to say that x is in C because this is just a weak limit. X is a weak limit. C is strongly closed, so it's not clear. Because if you take a sequence converges strongly, then the limit uh, sequence of element of C converges strongly, then the limit 
is in C. But the uh, sequence converging weakly is not clear. Well, th this is a result that we, we will prove. So we have already a self-contained proof, the parallelogram proof. So that is a proof. Now you have, uh, I say that this is true. So uh, general fact that for the moment we don't prove C convex in Hilbert, then C weakly clo uh, sequentially closed, weakly closed, if and only if C strongly closed. It is clear that if it is weakly closed, then it is strongly closed. Because a strong sequence converges strongly, converges also weakly. <laughs> but the converse is not, is not trivial. So this is easy, the more difficult, much more difficult. But this is a result. So if you, if you accept this result, then you have also that C is in, uh, in uh, in, in C, X is in C. Hmm? Okay. So this proof is not this this proof is not self-contained because of this point here. Hmm? Now, how we can conclude? Well, now we have that. H minus X by just the lower semi-continuity and not the continuity is less than or equal than the Liminf over K of H minus C and K. Okay? But this is a subsequence of CN and the wall CN, so this is already also the limit along the whole sequence, x minus cn, right? Because this is just a subsequence. This was already converging. So this was converges to the, um, sorry, h, the h capital C. OK? And this is enough, because this shows that uh, This is enough because this shows that we have shown the following. Is this clear? Hmm? So uh, it is, this, this proof is maybe more, more general, but is for the moment is, is not self-contained because of the result of strongly and weakly close. OK. So uh, now let us go back to our geometric intuition. So we remember. So it, the proof is, is clear to everybody. The proof is okay? This second proof is not okay. First proof is okay. It's not okay? Second proof, yeah, I have cuts inside. But the first proof is okay? Yeah. Okay, the first proof is okay. Okay, now, uh, so remember, we, we are in the following situation. Um, this is H. And this is our point of minimal distance. Why this? Because I'm taking a strange unit ball. Maybe let, let me so let, let me let me take this this isotropic unit ball just to. But you have to think about a strange projection point. I mean, you don't know how is the ball. So just let 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 us do a, a completely Euclidean picture, which is not the case, but just to understand. Okay. 
<laughs> so this is x. This is h. Now there is the following result. We would like to say essentially that is that is uh, well. It is reasonable to say that now, if I take a point out inside C, let me call it small C. No. Now I can consider the scalar product between h minus x and h minus h and c minus x. So I can consider the scalar product between this vector and this vector. So h minus x and c minus x. Well, in R2, with this picture, it is clear that we have a sign. There is a sign. That this color product has a sign. Well, this is true also in infinite dimensions. So the theorem says, uh, in, under the previous assumptions, uh, if x is a solution, so, uh, um, so under the previous assumption, assumptions, the solution x of the minimum problem satisfies the following inequality. <coughs> so this is, so it is an inequality. Why there is an inequality? Uh, well, there is an inequality because this object, C, is not flat. Is is not a, a, a hyperplane. It is a co just convex. So even in finite dimension, you cannot pretend that points of C have zero scalar product. With it. Huh? you cannot even even in finite dimension, you cannot pretend to have equality here. You are just saying that this has scalar product non positive. You cannot say more than this. You could, you could say it if C was a, hyper, it was a half space. But this is just convex. So you cannot pretend, so you cannot have more than the inequality. Right? This is the so-called Euler-Lagrange equation of the minimum problem. So when you have a minimum problem, you, so you solve it, for, you find a solution. And then the minimizer usually satisfy it an ODE, a PD, something like that. This is the analog. Euler Lagrange, called, usually in physics, called the Euler Lagrange equation. If you have studied mechanics, you know that if you have a Lagrangian, you minimize it, and then you find a system of ODEs, Lagrange equations. Eh? This is the analog. OK. So the, we have the uh, Conversely, also, maybe. Conversely. If x in C satisfies this, uh, let me call star, this uh, family of inequalities, huh? then x is a, is, is a, mini, is a minimizer. So here there is something more. Because usually, in calculus of variations, what do you do is the following. You have a functional, you minimize it, you find a solution, and then this, if you're lucky, this solution satisfies a PD or an OD, which is the Euler-Lagrange. That is, a minimizer is a stationary point, in other words. This is obvious. If everything goes well, it is obvious, even in one dimension, right? A minimizer is a stationary point. Namely, a minimizer, a minimizer, here you have zero gradient. You find a dimension. Eh? Here it is written something else. It is written, if you have a stationary point, then this is a minimizer. 
if x satisfies this, then it is a minimizer. This is completely different stuff. It is not true in this case. So why one can hope that this statement is true? Because of the convexity. Actually, you don't have this picture, but you have a picture like this. So if you have a, if you have a stationary point, convex, stationary, strictly convex, stationary point means minimize, unique. So this is the principle be behind this theorem and this kind of things, OK? So convexity here is really very, very strong assumption. OK, so uh, if you now remember, if you have, never, ever, if you have seen some, at least once how you pass from uh, being a minimizer to, to writing the Euler-Lagrange equation, then you, 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 you make a variation. You make the so-called first variation. You choose a direction in which you do a variation. And then we have to choose the direction to vary our. Uh, so we take a number that we denote it by t, t a number between 0 and 1. And then we take, so uh, h is given. We have h in h outside, say. And then we have x minimizer. And then we consider the following competitor. Let me denote it. Uh, they denote it by V. One minus T H, one minus T per, uh, one minus T uh, times X X plus T C. Hmm? So if you want, if you are confused by this, uh, maybe it is convenient. Uh, to think, since everything actually is, is, is invariant for translations, for the moment you can think that x is the origin if you want. Just think that x is the origin. So you have to show that the scalar, so if x is the origin, then you have to show that the scalar product of h against c is less than or equal than 0. Okay? Thinking, think of x as the origin. No? Now, what do you know? Now you, you, you are here. I mean, you have now x is the origin. No? And then you take a variation in the sense that you compare, you compare the value of your functional uh, with the value that you have if you, put, if you move along this direction. But you are convex. So you can move in this direction only with t positive and not with t negative. Because if you, if you take t negative, then you go outside and you cannot compare. Huh? So I have denoted this by v, right? OK. So what does it mean comparing now? We know that h minus x is the minimum possible distances of the form between h minus c, right? So, OK, this is an element of C, right? Because I'm taking a convex combination of two elements of C. Actually, so, I, 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 so this is V as a competitor, say. And therefore, now I know that this is the minimizer. V is a competitor, is a good competitor, so I know this. Competitor belonging to C. Hmm? Well, this, is, this solves, this, is the, the, this minimizes the distance between H and, and all points of C. This is one of the points of C. Therefore, this is less than or equal. OK? Um, mm. 
Hmm. Maybe it is better if, if, if I square it because then I, let me square it. Okay. Okay, so this is equal to h minus 1 minus t x minus t c square. Hmm? Uh, h minus x uh, plus t, so h minus x plus t x minus h, correct? h minus uh, x plus t x minus c. Hmm? So this is less than or equal than this, okay? Now I expand this square. I have the scalar product I can do. So this is h minus x square plus t square x minus c square. And then finally, there is uh, what I want to show to be non-positive. So plus 2t uh, scalar product h minus x uh, Uh, the sign is correct, yes. X minus C. Okay. Okay. So now I can, so this is less than or equal than this. Now I can cancel this with this. And therefore I find that uh, um, 2T h minus x, x minus c is less than or equal than t square, x minus c square. Now t is positive, therefore I can divide by t. Uh, sorry, no, um, and there is a plus, less than or equal than zero, uh, larger than or equal than zero larger than or equal than zero, okay? Now, t is positive, therefore I can divide everything by t. Uh, and then I find that t x minus, so I find that t x minus c uh, larger than or equal than two uh, h minus x c minus x. Now, because this goes on the, on, the right, on, the, on the other side of the equation. Now t is positive, it is sufficient, this is true for any t positive between zero and one, let t goes to zero, let t go to zero, and you end up that this necessarily must be less than or equal than zero. Okay, so sending t to zero plus, This implies that C minus X is less than alpha. And this is, this is our Euler-Lagrange inequality, say. So, you have to be very careful here because what you have done is to compare this distance, h minus x, with the distance of, you take any point in this half line, which is not a line, it's just half line, because t is positive, say, t is in between zero and one, say. But if you fix any c, then you move a little bit inside between zero, uh, so between zero and C, essentially, if X is the origin. And then you compare the distance, uh, 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 you compare the distance, uh, this distance, you know that this is smaller or than the distance of between H and one of this point. Uh, but, but your variation is unilateral. 
is only from this side and not from this side. And therefore, you cannot hope to have an equality but just an inequality. Huh? If this would be uh, linear, then the situation is different. But then we, we, will, we will go to this. So there is still something missing here because there is a claim also that if a solution of the inequality is a minimizer. This is more difficult. So to take a solution, so let x be a solution of that. So, so let x solve star. We have to show the following, that this is a minimizer. Okay. Okay. So we take this, the difference here. We have to show this. Actually, it's more convenient to show again uh, with the squares. It is more more convenient. So, uh, so let us do this, and we expand this. The idea is we have to show this. We expand this at some moment. We will, if you are lucky, we will use also this after the expansion in the scalar products. So this is what h square plus x square minus uh, two h x minus h square minus c squared plus 2hc. OK? Therefore, we can delete h squared. And so we end up with x squared minus c squared minus 2hx plus 2hc. Now, we want that maybe we can write a uh, equal x squared minus c squared minus 2h c minus x 2h c minus x now there is now we want uh, huh? now we, we add and subtract here you agree x minus c right <laughs> yes 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 x minus I prefer the C minus X, so I put a plus here, OK? <laughs> now, we have to use this. This is not present here, so we add and subtract X here. Hmm? So this is equal to X squared minus C squared. Then what? Plus 2 h minus x, c minus x, uh, plus 2, so minus x plus x, 2, x, c minus x. Hmm? Hoping. Uh, is it correct? X squared, huh? uh, so let me let me expand uh, this now. So um, ah, okay, yes, yes, probably is correct, yes, because then I expand this, so this is just equal to minus two x squared plus two x c. C, yes, is correct because now this everything becomes. This minus 2, it this, and so it remains minus x squared, then minus c squared. Then there is the object that I want to estimate, c minus x. And then there is this, plus 2, x and c, OK?
ok so our assumption is that this is less than or equal than zero huh? so so let me, I hope that I have the, the computations are correct so no I go here it is more safe so So at the end, we find that the difference that we want to, so this difference is actually equal to what we have. This is by assumption is known. This is less than or equal than 0 by assumption. And then there is a double product, actually. I mean, there is a perfect square, because this is a minus x minus c square, which is also less than or equal than 0. And therefore, everything is less than or equal than 0. OK? So we have shown that uh, if a solution of the Euler Lagrange a solution of the Euler Lagrange equation is actually minimized due to convexity. Okay. Now we, we can give another proof of uniqueness of minimizers. If you don't like the proof that we have made before, now we can do another proof of uniqueness of minimizers. So let me erase uh, everything so I can erase therefore now the initial problem the original minimum problem so x is unique minimum problem has a unique minimizer unique minimizer is a unique solution So, well, assume that you have, assume that, let me call x1 and x2, maybe, yes, x1, x2, two, so two, minim, two solutions, two minimizers, two solutions. Then they must solve the Euler-Lagrange inequality. The statement, the, this, the original minimum problem. Remember, we have written uh, that uh, the statement was C non empty closed convex closed there exist unique X in C. Is such that uh, x minus h uh, is equal to infimum h minus c h minus x maybe Uh, this was the, the claim. And given a point H, there exists a unique projection point nearest to, to C. So <coughs> this means that this is a minimum, of course. Hmm? This was the claim. We have shown existence. We have said that it is unique by strict convexity. Now we, we give another proof of uniqueness of this X. So, 
Is, is it clear, the statement? So I'm asking you what, what the PP Problem. <laughs> the original problem, sorry. This is the original problem. This is the original problem. Hmm? Minimum problem. So this infimum has a solution. That is this infizamine. We are showing. We have shown that this infizamine, uh, and now we show that X is unique. Okay. So now assume that you have two minimizers, two solutions of these uh, two points, two points in C. Namely, we have that x1 is in C, and it satisfies h minus x1 uh, scalar product uh, um, C minus x1 less than or equal than 0 for any C. Hmm? Hmm? You have, so, since it is a minimizer, we know it satisfies the Euler Lagrange inequality. Now, x2 also is a minimizer by the contradictory assumption. And therefore, now we, we, we have also this. For any C in C. Okay? So we have this. Is it okay? So we have at our disposal now two inequalities, and we want to find that at the end these are equal. Hmm? So what do we do? You see, we, we can test. Uh, see, we have the freedom of testing this for any C. But we know that x2 is in C. So we can put x2 here and similarly x1 here, because x1 is in C. So this we can do. Okay? This must be true for any. So we, we, in particular, true for one of them. So uh, and therefore, in particular, we have h minus x1. Uh, x2 minus x1 less than or equal than 0 and also h minus x2 uh, x1 minus x2 less than or equal than 0 now we add now we add the two inequalities so that we find what we are adding the two inequalities we have so x2 minus x1 scalar product this actually minus this right so h minus x1 minus uh, x2 minus x1 Huh? It's okay? Do, do you agree? No. <coughs> you don't agree? Okay. okay. So this is just the norm square. And therefore, this is necessarily equal to 0. But we know that this is a norm. And therefore, x1 is equal to x2. Huh? This implies hmm? so this is so you have now a complete proof for in various ways of the of the result, okay? Now uh, 
This, uh, this projection on convex set is very, very useful in general in functional analysis. So please remember, and also is uh, the base to show the base to show the Ritz, uh, the Ritz isometry. But we will go through this. But first, uh, let me say something on this. Uh, maybe this is a corollary. Corollary, yes, corollary. Assume something more on C. Now assume that, so, so let H be an Hilbert space. And let M be something more, be the subspace, which is in particular convex, but much more. So let M be subspace. However, we need to that not, not all subspaces of an infinite dimensional um, of an, not all subspaces of an infinite dimensional Hilbert space are closed. Therefore, you have to add that this is closed if you want to closed. Hmm? So in particular, we know that M is uh, convex and closed, non-empty, subspace, convex, and closed. So in particular, we know that we have the, the, our uh, family of inequalities. But this is more now. Can you imagine what is it? I mean, we are in this situation, actually. Now we have a subspace. Hmm? And so the, here there is our H. If the picture is Euclidean, really completely Euclidean, then what happens? Well, it happens that H is essentially orthogonal to M. No, and I'm sorry, if you take this point here, then this H minus X is orthogonal to this, right? This is what happens in finite dimension. Eh? Or remember that this picture is Euclidean. If your ball is strange, then this is orthogonal to this, OK? But apart from this remark, so this is M. This is, so given H, eh, there is a unique X by the previous result. We know that H minus X comma uh, C minus X is non-positive, OK? Hmm? But actually, you can say much more here, which is, which is exactly the following. Then h minus x c, let me use the, the symbol c, now is equal to 0 for any c in n. Sorry for the symbol c. Maybe we could use small m. I don't know what to use. Okay. So this is, I would, I would like to leave you uh, for homework, and we will do this tomorrow. I prefer to leave you this as home. This will be the first thing that we will do tomorrow. Huh? And then I would like also to leave you another exercise for tomorrow that we will do together. And so uh, exercise, homework. So take h equal to L2 of 0, 1. So we are slowly going outside the small L2 and going outside any Hilbert space. Um, consider the closed subspace B of H consisting 
of all polynomials poly polynomials of degree 2 hmm? compute the point of V Oh, uh, M, well, M and V are the same, eh? in this sense. Uh, compute the point of V, let me call it M, okay. Consisting of all polynomials of the V2, compute the point of M of minimal distance from T cube. Okay? So you have, this is your H. This is a point in L2. Well, you want to find, so it, now your closed subspace consists of polynomials of degree 2. So you want to find the point, the polynomial of degree 2 nearest to this polynomial of degree 3 with respect to the L2 norm. Okay, this is the, the problem. Homework. Okay. <coughs> 